Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program with you, the radio listeners. You have an opportunity at any point in time during this half-hour broadcast to pick up the phone, dial the number 281-837-2222, 281-837-2222. Any Bible questions or comments that you might uh, like to make concerning the Word of God, Romans 11, verses 1 through 4. And while you turn there, i also like to mention that uh, the Goose Creek Church of Christ, uh, beginning November the 15th through the uh, 17th, 14th, 16th, 17th, uh, we'll be having a gospel meeting, uh, 15th through the 18th, a gospel meeting at 7 o'clock uh, weekly. That will begin Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on the 15th, and it will run through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of that same week beginning at 7 o'clock. We invite you to come out. We're located at 4211 North Main Street in Baytown, Texas, and you also have an opportunity to ask any Bible questions you might have uh, that night. Uh, we will give everyone an opportunity to ask whatever Bible questions you might have. Bring your questions, and we will allow you to question the speaker or even question some things that you've heard uh, from various people in your walk of life. And so mark your calendars November 15th to the 18th. Amen. That being said, we're going to deal with the subject this afternoon, Are You in Love with the Mask? Picking up where we left off in la on last mm -hmm. week. In particular, we want to deal with the uh, Catholic religion, uh, Catholicism. And there are many of you who are in love uh, with the Pope based upon uh, the way most of you... Uh, 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 acted the time that he was down here in this area. And so we'll deal with that. Second Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 1. Paul says, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. He says, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you, get this, to one husband, that I might present you, he's writing to Christians, as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Paul tells them, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, he says, You might well bear with him. And so we're dealing with the subject, are you in love uh, with the mask? And uh, before we get uh, in more depth on this subject, I, I want to uh, bring some clarity to what we left off on last week. We had several callers on last week. Uh, an individual young man actually called in and said he had actually visited uh, a Church of Christ and he understood through uh, viewing the broadcast that our brother Javier has posted on YouTube after studying along with us uh, he came to the conclusion that uh, the Bible in fact only speaks of one church one body uh, we went on to discuss on last week that uh, Jesus God uh, the Holy Spirit uh, they don't have a multiplicity of ways to be saved. There are many, various uh, churches in our society and in our world today. Perhaps you woke up this morning or perhaps you uh, have driven down the street and you, you've noticed there are several buildings uh, with different names on, on the buildings uh, professing all to be Christian, uh, Christian churches. You have Baptist, you have Methodist, you have Catholic, which we'll be dealing with, Presbyterian, and the, and the list is, is in fact endless. And what we discussed on last week is that Jesus Christ only built one church. We discussed on last week that the church is not brick and mortar, but the church is in fact the people of God. Those who have obeyed what Jesus and the apostles taught in order to become a Christian, they are the ones who are added to the church that Jesus said he was going to build in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 and following. But it, is, it must be understood that Jesus only has one church that all must be a part of. We had the lady call in last week and she made the statement, uh, if I understand you right, you're saying that you have to be a member of the Church of Christ in order to be saved. Is that what you're saying? That was the question she asked us on last week. And our answer to her question was a simple answer of yes. 
Anyone who is not a member of the people of God, the body of Christ, that we read about in the Bible, they cannot and they will not go to heaven. Amen. Now, we mentioned last week that the, the kingdom, the church, is spiritual. That needs to be understood. In that, the church, it came down from heaven, and it started from heaven. Turn with me real quickly. I'm going to toss it to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47 real quickly. And now Brother Javier, I believe, has some things he wants to, uh, to bring to our attention. Acts chapter 2 and 47. Now, why am I turning to Acts chapter 2? Because this is when the church was established. On the day of Pentecost, it was not established in Matthew chapter 16 because Jesus said in Matthew 16, he hadn't died yet, first of all. And then he said that I will build my church. So when Jesus said I will in Matthew 16, it is understood by simple English that the church had not yet been built when Jesus made that statement in Matthew 16. So the question we ask is, well, when was it built? In Acts chapter 2, it was built. Peter stands up on the day of Pentecost and he preaches the gospel message he teaches the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The sinners out there hear this message being preached on the day of Pentecost, so much so that they are convicted and they obey the gospel. What do they do? They hear it, they believe it, they repent, they confess, and they are baptized, get this, in water for the remission or the forgiveness of their sins. And it is in the water... Jesus performs an operation and gives you the Holy Spirit. I made it very clear on last week, you cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. Amen. There are many of you who attend these denominational churches, Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Bright Light, New Light, Lakewood, and, and they taught you that you were a Christian, a child of God, after simply repeating a prayer after some man or some woman, and then later on, they plunged you in water. My friend, you were taught wrong, therefore you are baptized wrong, Jesus is not with those people, and you are still in your sins. The dead cannot bury the dead. Go back Amen. and listen to the YouTube video. Amen. They are dead themselves. They don't have the spirit themselves, so they have no authority from God to even do the spiritual work of God. And so if you've been baptized in the Baptist church, Methodist church, in the Lakewood church, the Catholic church, Methodist church, you need to understand something this afternoon. You are still lost. Amen. But it's once you obey the unadulterated truth, the doctrine that the apostles taught, that Jesus himself, that God himself, he adds you to the church. Acts 2.47, real quickly. Now, these people have already been baptized in the Christ. There are 3,000 on the day of Pentecost. When they heard, they got baptized. In verse 47, the Bible says this, Acts 2, 47. He says, praising God and having favor with all the people. Now get this, and the Lord added to, get this, what he add to? The church daily such as should be saved. The church daily such as should be saved. The question on the floor last week and today, what church was that, my friend? What church were they added to? Was it the Baptist? Was it the Catholic? Was it the Methodist? No, sir, no, ma'am. How do we know? Because those organizations did not start until after Jesus built his church. And so if you're a member of the Baptist, the Catholic, the Methodist, so-called non-denominational churches, it's because their doctrine, their teaching is different than what Christ and the apostles taught in the word of God. And you cannot leave earth and go to heaven in those vehicles, in those churches, because they are, in fact, doctrines that speak against what Christ and the apostles taught. The lady got upset last week and said, well, you're saying that a lot of people are going to be lost. Or you said, I just got to be a part of that one church in order to be saved. And we said, yes, ma'am, you do. Just like under the old covenant, those who lived in Noah's day, they had to get into that one ark. And everybody who did not get into that one ark, I asked you a question. Did they die saved or did they die lost? They had to get in that organization, that institution, that plan that God told Noah to build. And the Noah had to build it by the commandments that God gave him to build it. The church is the same way. There are many of you out there listening today believe a church is a church is a church. That the church does not matter. My friend... You cannot leave here believing that the church is not important. You have to understand before I toss it that Christ died for the church. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 29, I want you to turn in your Bibles. Acts chapter 20 and verse number 29. How can a church be a church in a church 
if Jesus died for his church. That, that's ridiculous. In Acts 20 and 29, just real quickly, Paul talking to the Ephesian elders in verse uh, 28. He says, Acts 20, 20, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over to which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Christ died for the church. Christ died for his people. And so therefore the church is important. The only vehicle that will get you from earth to glory Amen. is the church of Christ. The church that Jesus established. Anything else, my friend, you're going to find yourself in the devil's hell. The number is 281-837-2222. I'll talk to the brother Javier Frias to elaborate more on our subject. Brother Javier. Thank you, Brother Henry. Concerning the church, whether one like it or not, an individual wants to just glorify the God of heaven and Christ. However, they do not want to glorify that Christ did say he was going to build his church. And also the scriptures call the church the bride. And they desire to hate the bride, but only love the husband. And you cannot do that, audience, because the bride was brought down from heaven. And you have to be added to that bride in order, in order to get taken up to heaven when Christ returns. What Brother Henry said is book, chapter, and verse. And we pray that you take heed to it and one day repent and be baptized, born again in the church of Christ so you can have your sins removed and so you can be a part of the one body that will make heaven their home one day in the future. Amen. At this time, the subject concerning the uh, Pope Francis, the mask that he wears. Are you in love with the mask that he wears? And we want to look at different scriptures because the Pope calls himself the Vicar of Christ or the Most Holy Father. And those titles, those titles do not belong to a man on earth. And we know that Christ, he is the Son of God. In Isaiah, the chapter is 9, I want to look at a scripture that gives this title only to Jesus Christ and to no man on earth. Man. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. These are titles. When you call the Pope a father, a Amen. holy father, that's giving a title unto Amen. him that belongs only to Jesus Christ. And a lot of individuals have submitted themselves in their hearts to give on to the Pope. Yes. However, that honor is not accepted in the heaven. I think we have Amen. a caller on the line at this time. Caller, you on the air? Yes, go ahead, caller, you on the air. Yes. Right. No, we okay. The statement was, you ha here's here's what I want to make sure we understand. An individual who's a sinner must be baptized by a male uh, who has the spirit of God. I'm going to make sure we have and And the only way uh, uh, an individual has the spirit of God is he or she must obey and have obeyed the right doctrine, the okay. right teaching, in order to receive the spirit of God. The Baptist church, just by the name itself, it lets you know that the doctrine is different than what Jesus and the apostles taught. So you have to ask yourself, why would an individual call themselves a Baptist? Or why would an individual say, I'm a member of the Baptist church? Baptist church is nowhere in the Bible. Catholic right. church, Man. Methodist church, Presbyterian church. See, what a lot of people are saying, those are man-made organizations. They were founded after Jesus' church, which was established in A.D. 33 in Acts chapter 2. And so when you have people of those organizations claiming to speak for Christ, they cannot speak for Christ because, ma'am, they don't have the spirit of Christ. Amen. They are still sinners themselves who need to be saved. And so there are many of you who perhaps listen to this program have had hands put on you and placed in somebody's water and they put you in water, and they rolled you out of the water, and they told you that you were a Christian. 
But what you have to understand is they are dead themselves because they have not obeyed the doctrine of Christ in order to be saved. How do I know that? Based upon the very name and the title and the doctrine that they preach. Amen. I want to make sure we get that. See, there, just because somebody is packing a Bible and say they believe in Jesus, that doesn't mean that they're a Christian. It, yes, man, unless they've obeyed what Jesus and the apostles taught. And if a person obeys what Jesus and the apostles taught, they have to stick with the apostles' doctrine. See, I want you to go back to Acts chapter 2 real quick. I'm going to show you. I want to show you something. Once these people got baptized in Acts chapter 2, they heard the right doctrine. And therefore, in the water, I'm going to make sure we get that. We never said the water saves. It's in the water Jesus baptizes with the Spirit. Right. But when these people got baptized in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost when the church was established, the Bible says in verse 42, I'll start with 41. Then they that gladly received the word, they were baptized. And the same day, they didn't wait to get baptized. They were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now notice what they did. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They stayed with what the apostles taught. Amen. They did not get off of that, what the apostles taught. The Baptist church, the Methodist church, the Presbyterian church, they do not have the authority to speak for Christ because they don't teach the apostles' doctrine. Amen. So anybody who has been plunged in water and anybody who is a part of these man-made arcs, these man-made organizations, these man-made churches will be no different than those people who were lost in Noah's day who got in those man-made boats Amen. whenever the waters came up. Amen. Because the only ship, the only boat, the only ark that survived was the one that was designed by Noah, which he designed by God. Amen. God told him how to build it. Christ has built a church. He has given instructions to the apostles how the church should function. And anything that goes against what the apostles was taught by Jesus will drown, will sink, will not make it to heaven, just like those other boats in Noah's day, ma'am. Amen. And so, that's okay. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Amen. Well, ma'am, I tell you what, ma'am, I'm gonna tell you what I'm fixing to do, ma'am. Uh, you say you're. I don't care. Are you able to write? Okay. I want you to write my number down real quick. I want you to write my number down. You, just because you can't read, you know what you have. You have a soul, and God bless you for that. And your Amen. soul Amen. is created in the image of God. And so, you know what's so amazing about God? Even if you can't read, when people hear the truth, they'll be able to to, to, to distinguish between truth and error. Amen based upon your Amen. soul being created in the image of God. You will know based upon what you hear from the Spirit. We're not getting credit. Amen. God's Word, these words are Spirit and they are life. Right. And you hear truth and you, you understand it right. based upon just simply hearing the truth. And so let me give you my number real quick. 281-785-7566. Can you call that back out to me? 785. Yes. 785-785-785-83. Yes, ma'am. You're so correct. And you give us a call, and we're going to do whatever we can to get to you. And if you understand this, ma'am, we will, again, study more with you, and we will make sure that you have the necessary things you need in order to have your soul saved, ma'am. Appreciate okay. you calling in. Uh, Henry, I'm sorry. Henry Stevenson. Okay. Uh, H-E-N-R-Y. Yeah, H-E-N-R-Y. And you call me, ma'am, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk. Good Lord, say the same, and we'll... Uh, get to you, and if you want to obey the gospel, can I ask you what area of town you live in? You're in Houston. Okay, amen. You're not far at all. Okay, and we'll get we'll get somebody in touch with you, but please give me a call. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. God bless amen. you, brother Javier. Thank you, brother Henry. Beautiful job. As we continue this subject, the subject of the Pope exposing the Pope Francis, the positions of Pope cardinals, archbishops, priests, deacons, the lady. These positions, these 
false governments, this false hierarchy you do not find in the New Testament scriptures. I want to give the government and the hierarchy and the positions that are in the New Testament scriptures. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now today we do not have no more apostles. There was 13 apostles. They all died. We have no more prophets according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where it, said, where it says prophesying will cease. We have pastors, we have deacons, we have teachers, we have evangelists. And the idea is that this hierarchy that is in the Catholic Church is a false hierarchy. It's a position that was copied from the Roman government in that time frame. It was, there's copies made from the Old Testament and from Christianity. So they gel together different forms of governments and desire to compile one religion and they called it the Roman Catholic Church and at this time we want to continue to expose expose this individual because there's a lot of individuals men and women giving heed and taking heed to what he's saying what he's doing but Jesus Christ he, he always when he did a miracle when he told individuals concerning the gospel he said tell no man about me and this individual is not speaking like Christ Pope, Pope Francis if you compare Pope Francis what he says out of his mouth to what Jesus Christ says in the Bible, they have no similarities. Amen. They do not have the same spirit of God. They are not, Pope is not in the position of Christ on earth today. He is not in that position. Amen. The Pope is speaking things. As a matter of fact, the Pope has friends that are homosexual. He is not even reprimanding or reproving the homosexuals according to Romans chapter 1, 26 and following where the Holy Spirit it is inspired, and Paul speaks that that is a vile affection. And the idea is that we know that the Pope is not sent by God. He does not work for God. He does, is not a servant of God because the words, his speech, gives him away as a servant of Bilal or a servant of the devil. That's right. And the Pope is the biggest pimp in this planet, on this world. And you who love him are his prostitutes because you open your minds and you allow him to defile your conscience. Amen. You allow him to defile your mind and you bow down to him in heart or in, or in body. You kiss his ring. You praise him. You give him an honor that Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Ghost has not given him. Amen. Amen. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Amen. Thank you, Javier. Excellent job by both you and Henry. I want to point something out here concerning this very subject. And we want to help you to understand, audience, that you cannot rise up and teach a doctrine that is not in the scriptures. And this is the trouble <clears throat> organizations like the Catholic Church, the Baptist, Presbyterian, the list, as Henry said earlier, is endless. But you have to understand, audience, the Bible teaches us to read the answer out of the book. That's what the scriptures teach us. These are not answers that are found in the book. And the reason the Catholics change the scriptures and add to and take away is because their doctrine teaches that Paul was a member of the church and Paul wrote the Bible. Peter was a member of the church and Peter wrote the Bible. So they empower the Pope to add or take away mm. from the scriptures. Now he'll say he's not, but I'm gonna show you he would be a liar because he is adding and taking away. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter number two and verse five. The scriptures teach, for there is one God mm -hmm. and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. This is just one area. This is a powerful area because I was a Catholic for about 18 years. And in Catholicism, you're taught to pray to Mary. Mary is requested to pray for you. She will talk to God for you. That's a lie then, and it's always been a lie. It'll be a lie when the Lord returns. Because it says here there's one mediator. See, if this is correct and Mary is one, then it should say there are two mediators between God and man. man. Uh, the man Jesus Christ and his mama. It would say that. Or Mary, the wife of Joseph. And so since it's not there, 
one of the things that you have to understand is now you must accept Catholicism is a major one billion strong cogwheel that crushes the doctrine of Christ. Amen. Or attempts to, and it must be destroyed, the doctrine. And so what will you do with that, Catholics? Will you say, well, I don't pray to Mary anyway, but you're still part of the organization. You would be like a Ku Klux Klan ex-sheet-wearing member or a Israel United in Christ ex-purple guard-wearing member or an ex Black Panther little uh, Kango hat wearing member where you don't wear the garb anymore but you still support the organization. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. you're still involved with it. And you don't understand the severity oh, and as you no, point out, Henry, there's yeah, only I one know. church. Oh, That's good. One church. Let me finish this. Name That's what he says as I teach. Look, look at this. He says as I teach everywhere. In every, look at look what in else Jesus church. is. Hebrews 12, 24. Who do you come to? Look at the list of people you come to. And the man who is the only mediator listed on him. He says, and you come to, and he points to verse 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the spring that speaketh better things than that of Abel. To Jesus, the mediator, once again, not one of the mediators, the, the mediator. mediator. Man, I'm telling you, we were in a Catholic church. We would pray to Mary. We would, there were certain popes that had died. You would pray and ask those popes to help out. We would pray to Joseph. Yeah, yeah you'd pray to Joseph. Too. Angels also. Yeah. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi and all that. I don't even know what that nonsense means to this day. Judas. And uh, yeah, it's just St. Judas. St. Judas. Yeah, St. Jude. Saint yeah, Jude. wrote oh, the wrote oh, the, oh, the oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Spanish is Judas. Though. Yeah, it is. It, okay, I got and you. so you would you would pray for their rescue. Saint Christopher. Who is that? Ah, uh, who knows? <laughs> you know. Saint and, 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 yeah, yeah, you know, uh, uh, this nonsense, man. And you went to the confessional. Here's another one we gotta talk about next week. You went into the confessional, which is the little cubicle with the priest on the other side, and you confess to that priest your sins. You something all our father, I've, uh, I've, cur I've cursed out my uncle, you know. Punch my cousin in the stomach, you know. They would say, go say three Hail Marys to our fathers. And that's your penance, you know. And you make sign across. He, he make, you can see his hand through that little shade that, that you've been blessed. And it is taught in Catholicism. Your sins have been absolved by him through that method. Wow. And you know what scripture they try to use, you know, what's the other sins you bind on earth. But that's not what Peter and them did. That scripture is taken out of context. Whatsoever sins you shall loose on earth. Peter, now you didn't confess to Peter. What did he tell Cornelius? Stand up. I'm a also, man. I'm a man, man like you. Yeah. And so that's the thing that's taught. But you know, the idea is that the Catholic monster machine is so huge. It's grinding and crunching truth just as the Roman government did. Remember how I described the Roman government? I was more vicious than others. I had tore yeah. peace. That that beast was more vicious. He was bloodthirsty. He was that different than all the others. Doctor. Yeah. And so that Catholic Church is like that because it's a, it's a birth child of Rome. Yeah. And the idea is that it, it actually, some historians write, became the actual religion of the Roman government as before it was the uh, other religion that they had before Catholicism. But Catholicism is not Christianity and never has Amen. been. Amen. And see, that's the problem. And one of the sad parts is that you have a lot of people in the church that want to somehow link Christianity to Catholicism. Right. It is a break off. It is a rebel group that broke off from the concept of Christianity right. and start their own thing like a lot of people do to this day, like right. Max Licato did in San right. Antonio. He's a right. spinoff. You know, he Amen. broke off from the church and apostate. Right. United, United Church of Christ? 
Huh? Like the United, like the United Church, Church, those different types of groups. Yes, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. International church. Yeah, they want to try to lay claims. They want to lock into that name because they know that name attached them to Christ. But we don't have to call ourselves anything but the church, right. the people of God, right. the saved, the saints. That's, that's all they want. That's why I love to hear those callers and say, you know, that they've gotten baptized and because those are sincere people yeah. when they hear. But you know, just like that false foolishness that Kanye West has, you're talking about. Easy um, Yeah, that trash. Yeah. You see that's people holding those signs. People will believe what they want to believe. They'll believe it's okay to kill a person because it's a different race. They'll believe it's okay to kill a homeless or just slay him, you know. They'll believe it's okay to kill a female or a male, whatever the case may be, or a child. But it doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is what did the Lord say? What did Christ teach? What did he tell us we must do to be saved? He told us clearly if you die in your sins, you cannot, where yeah. he's going, you cannot yeah, come. Right. And so we cannot be there. So we've got to Amen. understand that. We've got, and that's for the saints too. Amen. The saints, because he was talking to the saints, wasn't he? Because yeah. right. there are many saints that think one saved, always yeah, saved. Right. Although they'll say it was not, but they live as though there's one saved, always saved. Because they, they, they have people who wear the title of doctor, doctor. in the church. Uh, and, and But they'll get on uh, the priest or the pope for calling themselves father or reverend. Uh, they'll get on people like Ed Young, which should be gotten on because he is wrong for using the title of doctor in theology. But they'll wear it. They'll wear it themselves, you know. And so the idea is it's all from school. So right. it's, it's the same lie that everyone else uses. And that's why Romans 2 is give us great comfort. You know, you're inexcusable, old man, who judge another who do the same thing. Mm, that's right, Turn it over to the Lord. Amen, bro. He shall judge it. Some incense go before, some incense come after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother Ozan, we, t we, uh, we talked to a lady that was a Catholic believer uh, today. All right. And um, Donna. Her name is Donna. Um, mm -hmm. She believes that, um, that she's born again, that she has the Holy Spirit. And I, I took her to John 3, 5. You know, Can unless you? you're born again of the water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So. She doesn't have the she doesn't have the spirit. She's not born again because she's not part of Christ's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So Christ is not going to give you his spirit if you're outside of his kingdom. No. So what makes her think she was born again? Did you ask? Well, she says uh, she's been there for thirty years. So that's the requirement: stay at the Catholic Church thirty yeah. years, and you're born again. And so she has she has the assurance that she believes that she is saved. Without being baptized. Without being baptized, you hear yeah, that? You say all you have to do oh, is yeah. ask God to come into your heart and, you, and He'll save you. But how do how can how do you refute Mark sixteen? You read my mind. Sixteen. Because the Savior said that one, didn't He? Yeah. So, so he that believe is baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. And you come, He said, No, Jesus, no. All you need to do is confess that you're the Son of God and believe with your heart, and you're saved. No, Jesus. So what would Jesus' next move be? So what do you oh, do with baptism? I'm sorry, Father. I guess I made a mistake. Yeah. What do you do with baptism? Because that's a requirement already received. We wouldn't uh, even know what that salvation. is if Jesus hadn't taught us, right? Hmm. So you can't be saved without bapt by, without being baptized. Can't. You know, that's a requirement because the operation takes place in the water. Right. And that's when God when Christ gives you the Spirit. That's right. So exactly. Colossians Without two. that taking place. You're not going to give me, uh, Christ's not going to give you his Holy Spirit. Not according to right. Jesus. Amen. Yeah, well said, without, brother. Without him giving you his spirit, he doesn't put you into his kingdom. You're not his. Romans so chapter 8. You can't be saved any other way. Can't other be than saved. what Christ requires in order for you to receive salvation. Amen. God bless you, brother. Excellent. <clears throat> well said. Well taught.